Okay, I welcome everyone to come for to attend the final session for ASPS meeting for 2020. Okay, so um, I'm extremely delighted, you know, to meet everyone here tonight. Okay, firstly, because uh, we know that today is actually is the eve of New Year's Eve. All right, so, so uh, what we know about the eve of New Year's Eve, right, is that, you know, we could be staying at home, watching TV, you know, for me, we'll be probably like uh, drinking whiskey and not at home. <laughs> yeah, but we chose uh, to be here today, all right, continuously learning, practicing, so that uh, one day we can become the professional speaker we dream of. Lah. Okay, so without further ado, I shall pass the session over to the president of ASPS, Jimin, okay, to take over the session. Jimin, please. Okay, the next speaker will share something close to our hearts and wallets. Uh, namely, how to use the skills future grants given by the Singapore government to all of us to transform our lives and careers. Our guest speaker is Haf Haris Arthur Malloy, associate at MNE Asia Pacific Private Limited. MNE started this year with the objective of helping Singaporeans upgrade their skills and achieve more career and financial success. Haris will be talking about skills, future, and grants for individuals and businesses. He will share with us how to best utilize outstanding skills, future credits, how you can earn a diploma in record time, just two to three weeks purely online with no exams required, how SMEs can train their staff without losing out on the finances or balancing wages and time for upgrading, and the different grants and processes you need to be aware of. And uh, over to you, Harris, to share with us the, your valuable information. Thank you, Jim, and thank you for inviting me, guys. Uh, good evening. It's actually already 9 o'clock, so again, uh, it's great to be invited, especially I want to uh, give a shout out to, uh, you know, Sean, Sean, for inviting me to this uh, session. Uh, I was in a little bit earlier, uh, you know, actually pretty interesting stuff, especially when it comes to, you know, writing a book about legacy. I think there's something that I probably have to be working towards. Uh, myself as well, hopefully soon. Uh, but yeah, thank you again for inviting me uh, for this session. I'm going to take about 25 to 30 minutes. Uh, Jimmy already did a fantastic uh, introduction. It is uh, and will be revolving around the skills, future credits and framework, okay, for both individuals and SMEs. So what I'll do is that I'm going to actually be sharing my screen. I have a little presentation done up. Um, I just want to check uh, for those that can see, uh, could you just give me a heads up that uh, one, you can hear me perfectly fine. And two, you can actually uh, see uh, the logo of my company uh, right now. Uh, is that good? Should I continue? Yes. Yes, perfect. Thank you very much for, uh, for that. Okay, so as you mentioned, uh, I'm from MNE Asia Pacific Consultancy Services Private Limited. So it's definitely a mouthful, uh, but we're a small little company that started just this year. Uh, in the, you know, the light of the pandemic, I think this is something that a lot of people, um, you know, we are seeing now that actually would uh, want to upgrade their skills, you know, want to make sure that uh, they stay in, uh, you know, in their jobs to make sure that if uh, they were to be unfortunately let go, that uh, they have the best opportunity to find something uh, really soon. Right, so uh, MNE Asia Pack uh, started from that, and we want to make sure that uh, you know we give uh, as many Singaporeans uh, the chance and opportunity to improve their lives, improve their career and financial success. Right, uh, quick introduction. So you've already seen me. I just want to introduce the rest of the team. Uh, this was a recent uh, birthday uh, event uh, by uh, one of the founders. Uh, it's her twenty-first birthday. The balloon says forty-four. Just ignore that. Uh, she says twenty-one anyway. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so, um, you know, this is our multicultural team. It's a, it's a young team, it's a small team, uh, but it's something that, uh, you know, uh, we love working together. Uh, we're an energetic team. Uh, we love working with people. And I think for anybody that, uh, you know, would approach us or any businesses or individuals that would like to come and meet us, I think you'll have a wonderful time, uh, you know, just interacting with us as well. And we'd love to interact with you guys uh, as well also. All right, so this is the team, um, and that's me. I'm not in the picture, uh, but uh, yeah, here I am. 
Okay, so now on to the agenda. Okay, I think this is the uh, the meat of what we're going to talk about. Uh, the good thing is I'm actually going to keep this pretty short. There's only two main things uh, that I'll be talking about. And that first one would be uh, individuals. And the second one would be for SMEs. Okay, so again, this all revolves around the skills future framework and the skills future credits for both individuals and for SMEs. And they differ slightly, but they pretty much revolve around uh, one very common theme. And that, that is, of course, you know, upgrading your skills. Okay, so I'm going to start with individuals. For, uh, firstly, as you can see, uh, on the top left corner, there's only one uh, individual there. Okay, so I'm going to talk about first, uh, the skills future credit and how this all uh, started. Uh, so skills future, as you know, probably started a few years ago. I think um, majority of us would have already received it uh, in our mail. So you've probably heard of it, uh, you know, in the news or on the newspapers. You know, Skills Future was something, um, you know, was created to help Singaporeans, uh, you know, upgrade their skills, go for courses, do something new, pick up a new skill, you know, uh, improve themselves in, in one way or another, right? So it is eligible for Singaporeans above the age of 25. Uh, so this was me two years ago. I received it in the mail. I was like, oh, okay, thanks for reminding me that I'm getting older. Uh, but yeah, so now I have this money, $500 uh, as that first, uh, you know, top up. Uh, but the thing is, for many people my age, I think for a lot of Singaporeans as well, uh, you receive this mail, you find out that, hey, you know, it's $500, but because it's not cash, uh, and because there are very limited things that you can use this money for, uh, you don't know what to do with it, right? You're probably waiting for somebody to tell you, hey, Harris, I heard about this th uh, thing with SkillsFuture, and I'm going to go for this course, why don't you join me? You know, you probably want to wait for your friends. Um, so I was there. I was waiting for somebody to you know, show me to uh, a course, but nobody did. So I've never touched this $500, uh, $500. So I still have that original $500. But something happened this year as well. In light of COVID and, uh, you know, I think the financial uh, systems and support the government was, uh, was doing and giving out, uh, SkillsFuture also had a little bit of attention. Um, how? It was through an additional one-time $500 credit top-up, right? So you start off, you have $500, and then just this year, you probably got another $500. So now you have $1,000, right? And then we're not done because for Singaporeans, specifically between the ages of 40 to 60 years old, you receive one more $500, okay? So in total, simple math, 500 times three, that's a total of $1,500, Okay, but there's a caveat on that last $500, the one specifically for Singaporeans between the ages of 40 to 60 years old. That $500 can only be used for SG United Skills programs and SG United Mid Career Pathway programs. These are much longer programs, and I think uh, from our expertise and from the people that we've been speaking to, uh, the SG United Skills program uh, is definitely a lengthier uh, course. It's a, uh, definitely something a little bit more uh, commitment heavy because they are six-month courses. Uh, so a lot of people have not really been using that. Um, of course, it's still available. It's something I, I would encourage you to check out. Uh, but if you don't use that 500 for the SG United Skills Program because of the commitment issues, you still have that original $1,000. I think, um, you know, a lot of people, you may have uh, thought of using it, but maybe, you know, maybe you have attended a course or two, uh, but I would think the majority of us still have not really utilized it. Right. Uh, but whenever someone brings up the topic of skills future, and we probably heard uh, you know, skills future uh, quite a few times. Um, you know, I think the, the thing, the first thing that pops up into your head is, um, you know, what kind of courses can I go for? A lot of the time, people would think that, oh, I'll go for a baking course, uh, I'll learn how to make cookies, or flower arrangement, uh, something that is, you know, usually hobby based or uh, light skill kind of, uh, you know, learning, you know. Um, but the thing is, while that is available, um, I don't think, I mean, we personally don't think it's the best use of your money and your time, right? Uh, because there's actually a myriad of different things you can use this money for. Something that um, probably instead of hobby-based, you know, like baking and all that, something that could help you in your career, you know, something that could help you pick up new skills, uh, things like digital marketing, or things like retail management. Uh, these are things you can use the same uh, dollars for, you know. Uh, of course, learning, you know, how to bake cookies is 
you know, all fun and games. Uh, but I think for a lot of us who do uh, need help, especially in this trying times, um, I think, you know, learning and picking up new skills to um, stay, um, you know, uh, stay a good candidate for uh, to be employed or to stay employed is definitely something a little bit more worthwhile right and this is the thing that i'm going to be introducing to you guys shortly and this is the workforce skills qualification wsq okay so wsq uh, is not new you know wsq is something that i think a lot of singaporeans will probably be quite familiar with by now right but a lot of people don't know is that you can use your skills future credits to go for WSQ qualifications, right? Uh, it's not all just fun and games. These are, you know, proper courses, um, you know, a little bit more um, uh, worthwhile in terms of uh, picking up skills, like actual hard and soft skills for business, right? Uh, because this is something uh, that is, you know, linked with productivity, with your capability, and, um, you know, to help you out with, uh, with your career or even transition into something totally new, right? And this is what we believe uh, a lot of Singaporeans should be looking to use or to utilize their skills future credits for, okay? So how does the WSQ qualification work when it comes to the skills future framework? Well, the WSQ uh, qualification actually also has a diploma. It's called the WSQ diploma. It's very simple. The thing is right now, because of COVID, um, a lot of the learning has moved from the classroom to the comfort of your home, right? Through a WSQ diploma via the Skills Future Framework, you can actually earn a diploma in two to three weeks, right? It's purely online. There's no exams whatsoever. It is recognized qualification. And as I mentioned earlier, it is funded by Skills Future. You know, you don't actually, I mean, if you have not used uh, the money that was given to you, you don't actually have to come up with any cash. You can actually utilize the, five, the original 500, or the, if you've already used that, the new 500 that we just received, you know, a few months ago, right? And these courses, these WSQ diplomas are already heavily subsidized. So they're already heavily subsidized, plus the balance, whatever it is, you know, you can actually use your skills future credit for, right? For the individuals that I'm speaking to, if you are between the age of, I mean, I think if you are 40 and above, you know, you just have to be 40 and above, such diplomas, this WSQ diplomas are going at 90% off, right? So 90% is already covered by the government. The only balance is 10% for you, and that 10% can be funded by Skills Future. That means typically uh, you don't only, uh, you know, you can actually go for more than one. You can probably do two diplomas if you're really up for it. Right, and this is record time, and this is a proper qualification, and uh, I think this is something definitely very exciting um, for some of us who maybe you know had didn't have the luxury to uh, earn a diploma uh, in our younger days. I think this is a fantastic time. It's beginner friendly, and again, you don't even have to leave your bed. You could be in bed to do this diploma. Okay. <laughs> So, yeah, I heard a laughter there. Uh, <laughs> it's very hard to get out of bed nowadays. You know, you can do everything from bed. You can order food from bed. You can do a diploma from bed, right? So uh, just for us with m and Asia Pacific, uh, the diplomas that are currently available um, today would be a diploma in tourism, a diploma in retail, and a diploma in e-commerce. Uh, starting next year, which I know is around the corner, but we are introducing food and beverage, human resources, and logistics. Right, so that means, and I think uh, the most popular ones have been retail and e-commerce. Um, you know, we we see a lot of advertisements online, or we hear a lot of talk of people creating, you know, online stores. You know, you have your Amazon, your Coutens, you know, now Lazada and Shopee. Uh, you know, taking Singapore by storm. You know, you have your 11, 11 sales, there were 12, 12 sales every single month. A new sale. You know, it's it's getting a little crazy out there. But a lot of people have been using e-commerce. Um, to make money, you know, for themselves uh, would be a side hustle, as some would call it, something you do on the side uh, to kind of help you out. Uh, but for a lot of businesses, a lot of traditional businesses, e-commerce is the way forward as well. Uh, this means if you're uh, having a brick and mortar store, if you're working in a brick and mortar store that has not transitioned online, a diploma in e-commerce would give you extremely relevant skills to digitalize a traditional business to bring it online, to start getting new customers purely online. Um, and for a lot of companies out there, because uh, you know, they might not even need an office space anymore, they might be actually be you know, thinking about getting out of the office space and doing everything online. And actually nowadays that's very, very plausible. 
you know, such diplomas could give you the relevant proper skills to do it for yourself if you're interested, or if you are an employer to get your own staff to do it for you, right? So that's the most popular course. But of course, F&B, HR and logistics are, you know, um, uh, older uh, professions that are still very popular and we still need a lot more uh, people specialized in them uh, to attend, you know, such qualifications to be, uh, to pick up new skills and be very helpful um, in the office. Okay, and last but not least, and uh, this is not a bribe, but it's something that is available. Uh, this is Skills Future Qualification Award, right? Uh, for uh, some of the diplomas, the diplomas that we are offering definitely uh, could help you uh, get this. Uh, but Singapore citizens, if upon completion of your WSQ diploma, you could get a thousand dollars, and this is cash. Uh, you see the thousand dollar note. Uh, if you had, if you didn't know, it's. Uh, discontinued. So uh, this one I still have, so it's limited edition. I'm kidding. Uh, but it's a thousand dollars cash. It's not, uh, you know, paid as a form of credit for you to go and learn another course. This will be sent to your bank account upon completion and will help you out with the completion award. Uh, sorry, the qualification award to, uh, you know, to go and apply for it as well if uh, you're working with us to attend one of the diplomas that we offer. Right. So as I mentioned, not only do you not have to come up with cash to attend, uh, you know, this diploma to earn yourself a diploma, uh, you can also, you know, get some money out of it. Right. And I think this is definitely something that uh, a lot of people have been very excited about. Um, but it's not just about the money, of course. Uh, picking up relevant skills is definitely, um, I think, that would be the biggest draw here, especially, uh, you know, if you want to remain employable or if you want to, you know, transition into something new, um, you know, and exciting for the future. Okay, so that's all I have for the individuals. Now I'm going to move on to the SMEs. Okay, so this will be the people who own businesses. How does the Skills Future framework also help you guys? Right? So a lot of the times people would think SkillsFuture is that $500 that we talk about, the money that we have in our accounts that we can use for ourselves. But businesses aren't <laughs> left out as well. Through the SkillsFuture framework, the government also wants you to train your staff. You know, it's something that you can do to sponsor their education. And there are two schemes that mainly work hand in hand to help you out with this. Okay? First, on the left, you can see would be the SkillsFuture Enterprise Credit. This is a one-time off. $10,000 credit that you can use uh, to send your staff for training courses, okay? So again, individuals have the skills future credit, the 500, 500, and then the 500. This one is 10,000 for the entire company. If you have 100 staff or 10 staff, it doesn't matter, you still have up to $10,000 that you can use. So how does it work? When you send your uh, staff for a training course, it doesn't have to be a WSQ diploma because the diploma could be one of them, uh, but there are uh, more courses available. How it works is that same thing, the courses are already 90% off via the subsidy. But after that, you still can claim 70% of the, uh, the remaining fee if you choose to sponsor uh, the education for your staff. Okay, I'll, I'll have an example a little bit later, but as you can see, that's actually a lot of money um, that's available for businesses to train their employees. You know, I think that this is something that is um, very, very important because um, if we aren't going to be, you know, if individuals aren't going to take their own responsibility to upskill, um, you know, as business owners, I think this is something that you should push uh, your people to upskill because it helps you directly. You know, if they pick up relevant skills, they could help you in your business and, you know, maybe get more customers or, you know, improve uh, processes and stuff like that, it helps you out as well. And it helps them out as well, right? And along with the credit, the $10,000 credit, is also the enhanced absentee payroll. Now, for a lot of business owners that I've spoken to, they are very worried that if they send their uh, staff to study, then how to work? You know, you're taking away productivity time. You're taking away, you know, time at the office and stuff like that. And it's understandable. And uh, the government has also, you know, thought of this. So if you choose to sponsor your staff, their education, and they study during office hours, you'll also get, you know, some money back to offset their wages. What you can do is that you can claim up to 80% of their hourly basic salary kept at $7.50 per hour. So while your staff is... Uh, studying during office hours, uh, you're getting paid as well to also offset their wages, okay? Now, I'll give you the example of how this works, okay? How this works is actually very, very important. Now, let's assume that a diploma costs $4,000. 
This is the average price. Some would be a little bit cheaper. Uh, some would be a little bit more expensive, but the average would be around $4,000, okay? So as I mentioned, you only need to pay 10% as 90% is already subsidized. That means you have a gross cash outlay of $400, 10% of 4000 $400 that the company has to pay first, okay? So outlay. But this is not the $10,000 credit yet. We still have the second step. From the $400 that you pay, this is when you can actually claim 70% of that. And then you deduct this from the $10,000 credit. So if we do the math again, that 4K diploma, you pay 400, you claim back 280. At the end, you only pay $120 for each staff to go for a diploma. Right? That's a net outlay of 120 bucks, which is 97% total subsidy, only paying 3% of the total diploma cost. As you can see, there's a lot of help from the government for this. You know, it really reduces the amount of cost that employers have to pay to make sure that their uh, staff get trained. Right? So this is very, very helpful, but we're not done. Right? We talk about the uh, wages, the um, payroll subsidy. Right? So I'm going to break it down for you. Let's say you decide to send your staff for a diploma. One of the WSU diplomas. Let's say it's a diploma of e-commerce. Right? So how it works is that each diploma has eight modules. And each module is 16 hours long. Right? So eight times 16, it's 128 hours. 128 hours to complete a full diploma. This can be done part-time. So maybe like four hours a week, four hours a day, it really depends, or full-time, right? That means eight hours a day, you know, every single day. It's possible as well. You could do eight hours a day, but only one day a week. That's totally fine as well. Whatever pace that, you're, that you or your employees want to take, they can take at their own pace because everything is purely online, right? So while they study during office hours, as I mentioned, you're remunerated back with $7.50 per hour. Again, this is to offset their wages because instead of working, they're studying, they're taking the course, right? So that means, again, math, 120 hours times $7.50 per hour, that's $960 per employee per diploma. One employee can actually take multiple diplomas. So one person, you can send for 10 diplomas. Or you can have 10 people take one diploma each, no problem, right? But while they are studying during office hours, you get some money back. Again, this is to offset their wages, right? Because, you know, they're not working uh, while, you know, studying, right? But again, we're not done. Because as I mentioned, you have that $10,000 credit, but you're only actually claiming $280 per diploma, right? If I go back a few slides, you claim back on the right-hand side over there, you claim back $280 from the $400 that you pay, right? This means that if you're only paying $280 per diploma, you can effectively do this 35 times, 35 different diplomas or different courses. You can mix and match, no problem, right? And you stand to recover the cost, right? So 35 times 960, which is what you get from the uh, payroll subsidy minus 120, which is how much you actually still have to pay for the cost. That's again, 3%, right? If we do the math, that's $29,400 that you can earn back from the payroll subsidy, right? And it's not just the money here. Yes, the money is helpful. You know, I think right now, if I speak to, you know, any business owner on the street, would 30,000, almost $30,000 help you out with your costs and, you know, whatever that, it, that your fixed cost is still running today. Definitely. I think a lot of them snap in my hands for it, right? Because when COVID started, you had a lot of um, wage subsidies, but a lot of that, a lot of that is already disappearing, right? So covering wages is going to be a little bit of an issue moving forward, especially in 2021, right? But from this, you get money to cover wages. Plus, you have a team of staff with new skills, ready for a new project or an expansion, whatever that would help you out in business. Right? I think that's really valuable. It's a win-win-win situation. You as the employer get a bit more cash flow. You have staff that get a diploma for the staff. Hey, my boss pays, my boss pays for, my, um, for my education. You know, they'd definitely be very grateful for that. 
Plus, remember, the $1,000 qualification award is still available as well. So they'll get money from that as well. And the government also wins because they want people to, you know, utilize skills future. They want people to, you know, upskill and upgrade themselves because Singapore, as we know, we only have one resource, which is ourselves. You know, the human resource is the only thing that we truly, truly have, right? So it's definitely a win all around. And I think that if we really sit down to think about it, a lot of businesses are talking about retrenchment. A lot of businesses are talking about sizing down, you know, firing people, looking at the expenses. Now it's end of year, right? They can actually see if they made profit or how much losses they made this year, right? If you are a business owner, instead of thinking about retrenching staff, you're thinking of training them. Instead of letting go people, you, re- you are, you know, keeping them. You're still giving them a job. A lot of people are so worried about job security right now. If you tap on this, not only do your, do your staff benefit, you benefit as an employer as well, right? Because will be, people will be grateful. They'll be talking about, oh, you know, my boss still makes sure that I have a job, you know, moving 2021, I'm still employed, you know, thank God for that. You know, and this would definitely help you out in that scenario, okay? Now, I also know a lot of business owners that are very worried. They're very worried that if they train their staff, they would leave. You know, I give them so many skills. I pay for this. I pay for that. You know, what if we train them and leave, right? As this first guy speaks on the left, right? But you also have to consider, what if we don't train them and they stay, right? That's also not a good thing. Investing in your employees is very, very important, right? You have to train your employees so that they can upgrade their skills. And if they stay, which they will stay, you know, because you're you're keeping their jobs, you're not letting them go, they will definitely you know, return the favor to be more productive, to be more skillful, to help you out in business as well. <laughs> okay. So last but not least, I know there will be a group of you that may not be above the age of 40, nor do you own an SME. Right? Firstly, thank you for listening. I know that it may not be the most relevant for you, you know, especially if you're not above the age of 40 or own an SME. So what's in it for you? Okay. As I mentioned, m and Asia Pack is definitely a small company. We only just started this year. So we're definitely looking for people to collaborate with. You know, I think that you know, we're always looking for ambitious people to collaborate with. You know, in a world that's so closely connected, we do probably have friends, family, clients, associates that would either fall within that category or know somebody that might. You know, so if you don't, if you're not about 40, we don't own a business, there's still a way uh, for us to work together. And I think we would love to work together uh, and find a way that all of us would prosper from this, right? So after this, uh, from the feedback form, there'll be, there'll be a, a slide for that. Uh, whether, you know, if you're not 40 or own a business, still, you know, reach out to us and I think we'll find uh, some way to work together as well, okay? Uh, so if you want to contact us, uh, we have our email, which is contact us at mneapac.com. Uh, you have the uh, numbers of our founders. You can call them directly, drop them a message. We have Min, Neela, and Eddie. Um, those are the numbers. These are the three founders. And if you want to drop by our office, uh, you can as well. We're at uh, Bugis Junction Tower. That is 230 Victoria Street, level 15. Of course, do drop us a call before you come by. Uh, you know, I think nowadays not everybody's in the office all the time. Uh, we can work from home as well. Uh, but, you know, do let us know if you want to come by to the office. We'd uh, love to, uh, you know, uh, invite you over as well. Uh, it's a new office, it's pretty nice. Uh, and we do our appointments there as well. So uh, come by if you really want to, okay? Um, and that would be it for my uh, little sharing session right now. Um, for those that do want to uh, collaborate with us in some way, or if you want to um, attend a diploma for yourself, you want to find out what diplomas are available, something that uh, might be useful for you. Uh, you can also fill up the form. Uh, you can leave your details behind and uh, we'll contact you as well. If you're a business owner, you want to talk about the different grants that are available um, via the Skills Future Framework. There's actually a few more other than the two that I spoke about. Um, we could help you out with that, with that as well. Again, we're a consultancy. We're not the one uh, giving you the grant, but we'll help you out uh, in terms of applying for them. And I think our expertise uh, would show uh, in that form. So I'm going to keep this slide up for everybody that, uh, you know, I, I'm sure you have QR code scanners now. If I were to do this five years ago, nobody would know what to do with this weird uh, picture. Uh, but nowadays, I think everybody's quite familiar with the QR code. You can actually just do a quick scan, uh, go to the Google form, uh, fill out your information if you want us to contact you. And um, yeah, thank you for, um, you know, inviting me to this uh, quick little sharing session.
thank you for your time. Um, and let's open up for Q and A. If anybody has any questions, uh, we can do that. Uh, feel free to, to ask any questions. I think it's a very val valuable uh, session just now. Yeah. Uh, one question from me, Haris. Uh, yes. Let's say someone applies for the Mid Career Skills uh, SG United Mid Career Skills mm. Upgrading. He goes to the employer, he gets an attachment. Fine, he gets the 80% government grant, so mm. on. Can he apply for this uh, additional training like he's a uh, uh, you mentioned earlier or the diploma plus other things, other stuff in okay, addition great. to his, yeah. Good question. So um, you have a thousand, if let's say you're between the age of 40 and 60, you have a thousand five hundred dollars, right? Only 500 is specifically set aside for the SG United, um, you know, the few things that you have for them. Uh, but you can actually use the whole amount for that. So that's not a problem. Uh, but let's say you only use maybe $500 uh, or maybe a little bit more. If you still have balance, uh, yeah, you can you can go for the rest of the skills switch uh, courses. Uh, so you're not limited to any one of them. You're only limited up to the amount in your skills future. But um, if let's say you have utilized fully, you know, all the money in skills future, let's say you have none left, uh, you can still pay cash. That's still available. Uh, between the ages of 40 um, and above, the courses are still 90% subsidized. You know, so that means if it's, let's say, 400, 500, 600 dollars, uh, and let's say you have finished your skills future, um, you can still use cash because it's still a pretty good deal, in my opinion, right? If you still want to, uh, you know, come out even more, you want to go for more courses, you finish your thousand five, you still want to go again, let's do it. It's not a problem. Um, so yeah, the whole framework just has that credit, but the credit is just one part of the system. Thank you for the question. The thousand dollars you mentioned about upon completion of one WSQ diploma, Yes. Yeah, one is it uh, only for one time or you let's say do two or three diplomas do you mm -hmm. get three thousand or... okay so i'll need to check again um i can i think my that. my founders will know a little bit better but yeah. from my knowledge i think that it is per diploma but do uh get i'll, I'll get back to you on that i'll probably uh, write to you i think for everybody yeah, that yeah. would be yeah. interested to find out that answer as well um i'll probably give you an update on that as well uh, yeah. Harris actually can answer that uh, that question. Oh yes, Eddie. Eddie, you're in in the group. Uh, yeah, so yeah. one of the founders is actually in the group. So um, Eddie, you can actually yeah answer that. Yeah. So pertaining to that question, right? Um, during 2016, the government actually uncapped the the whole diploma uh, code, meaning to say that uh, it used to be. Uh, the government only support you with one diploma, 1,000. But moving from 2016, where they actually wanted to encourage lifelong learning, it becomes uncapped. Meaning to say, as long as you wish to learn, you can continue taking two diploma, three diploma. But the selected framework for the WSQ diploma, right? Not all the, uh, the diploma will get you $1,000. So you must check carefully uh, with us, we give you uh, free services to all this to let you know which diploma give the 1000 and from there if you are actually interested to explore those then we can encourage you to go for it as well. Yeah, thank you Eddie. Yeah, uh, for those that didn't know actually the founders are in uh, the group. I think one of them have already left but thank you Eddie for, uh, for speaking up and answering the question. No problem. Nila is here also. Okay. Jimin, do you have anything else? Or oh, anybody else? Do you have any questions? Uh, okay, sorry. One one thing you currently showed three courses plus three more courses coming uh, first Q 2021. Mm. Uh, are these the only six diploma courses available or there are more? Uh, so currently, these are the ones that we are going to be onboarding mm -hmm. um, because we also have to see you know, popularity and stuff like that. We, we uh, do make sure that you know they are valid, they are good, they are worthwhile to go because it's actually quite a long list. Um, so how it works is that we actually need to work with the ATOs, which is the approved training organizations. So the ones that we work with, these are the six that we think uh, would definitely be very, very helpful. Yeah. Are you going to consider like a diploma in uh, personal data protection? Because I think that's like a hot topic nowadays. Mm -hmm. Eddie, could you answer that? How about that? PDPA? Yeah, PDPA. Would that be a diploma, a diploma course, I think so. Someone organizing that. 
advanced Actually, level. Actually, there are a lot of uh, diploma courses coming out left, right, center also. <laughs> 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 I think if you go to go through the whole list, right, uh, we will never get until tomorrow. We never finish the presentation. Uh, but according, this actually the type of diploma that we want to roll out to the students that we are offering services to, right? Because most of them, when they come to us, they actually are looking beyond just getting the certificate and the skill set. Um, most of them, in realistic, they also want to get the $1,000. Um, you might actually say that, uh, you know, we don't mind about the money, but since it's given up by the government, yeah, their question is just why not take it if I have the time to go and just learn it. Because 14 days diploma, I think many of us here been through education the traditional way. Uh, telling ourselves 14 days diploma, I don't think my mom will even approve of that. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, 14 to 21 days is really a crash course diploma, but I've been through it myself. I'm actually currently on a part-time uh, retail specialist diploma course, uh, and I find it very refreshing, very helpful, and very closely related to what I intend to pursue. So it does help a lot. Um, it's not really teach you nothing, and, and, and at the end of the day, you gain nothing. No, it's actually the opposite, complete opposite of that. Yeah, so we have a long list, uh, security, uh, PDPA, uh, we have gardening, we have uh, early childhood, we have so many. It's just that which of those will eventually help you? You can get the $1,000 and then pursue it in a different kind of direction, also can. So you can actually kill two birds in one stone. Okay, right, great. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, how do hmm. people, interested people, able to work with your consultancy? That means do you charge a fee or what, what is your... Model, how, how does it work? Nila, you want to answer that? Okay, yes. Hi, hi everybody. Uh, good evening. Um, okay, uh, we do not, ours is a free consultancy. Uh, we do not charge anyone anything because what we want to do is also educate uh, people because we realize a lot of people doesn't know uh, what they can do. Uh, so we want to, it's, it's free consultation basically um, and if they, there's no obligation as well. So people can come and speak to us. If they're interested in what we have, good. If we don't, if they don't have, uh, we don't have what they need, uh, we can, you know, uh, point to the right direction for where they can go. Um, so we do both ways. So I think at the main point, what we're trying to do right now is not just, um, you know, uh, it, it's to educate. So we don't charge them for that. So. Okay, thank you. And, Thanks. You're welcome. I think just now another question of yours is how do we um, discuss about the possible collaboration? Uh, the best way to explore all these options is to really come down for a more uh, deeper conversation, like a one-to-one -one discussion. So we can actually tell you how is the framework being done. Like at the end of the day, uh, this is a win-win situation game coming from the government to the citizens and to us as well. So the citizen get the cert, the citizen get the qualification award, the 1,000 discontinued 1,000 note, okay? And uh, the school get the, uh, the students, and for us, we get commission from the schools. So we are actually helping the schools just to do recruitment. So the only one that's paying money out of their pockets is our dear government. <laughs> that's good for, for a start. Yeah. I okay. hope we continue that way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we should carry on. Huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, I used to work at Bugis Junction 11 years there. So I, I'm quite familiar with 15th floor. Wow, come okay. down. Yes, come yeah. floor, yeah, come 15th floor used to be the CEO office for Kepperland. Wow. <laughs> I used to work for the company there. Yeah. Ah. yeah. Enterprise AG is also here. Yeah, yeah. They are still down there. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Good. All right, so when it comes to collaboration, there's uh, basically nothing to lose because from your side, there's really no cost. If mm -hmm. you come across interested party who is keen to know more, um, you can just set an appointment with us, come down, then we'll just share all the options available. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, just a question from our association, my association, the Association of Singapore Professional Speakers. Uh, how mm -hmm. do you think such associations can work with you? I mean, the, how, how does it work? I know for uh, SME company, yes, for individual, yes. Uh, but let's say our association, we want to help our members in a whatever way. What, what is the best way forward? Eddie, would you like to take that? Uh, what is the best way? I mean, coming from, I think this is uh, related to Toastmaster or this is really Toastmaster. Uh, speaking right? club or whatever, or professional speaking in that aspect. Yeah. All right, we can train them mm -hmm. to do the presentation for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> because there are ready speakers here. Yeah, okay. Correct, correct. I think uh, it will still be on an individual basis. So um, I think the best way would be, you know, 
we can probably just let them know that you know we exist. Uh, you know, they can always reach out to us. Uh, you know, I think you can probably send an EDM as well. I think the best way would just be um, you know understanding that this is available. Uh, I because from a uh, speaking, from, I mean from a. Uh, like, an organization that's not an SME, um, you don't have the same uh, grants and all that available. Uh, but you know, we're still individuals. You know, I think we're we're a bunch of individuals, and we still all have the credits that were given to us. And I think it's the 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 thing here is to make sure that we use them for the right things. Of course, I think going for like a baking class, flower arrangement is going to be fun. Um, but I think this is the one that's going to probably be very very helpful in terms of career. Mm. Okay, great. I yeah. think another way we can do this uh, moving forward, right, is that um, at the end of the day, you want to be able to have the opportunity to uh, present more to more individuals or to more people or in the a, in a podium setting or in a one-to-one -one basis. So by having the right product and the skill sets to present, uh, I think that is one of the easiest way to improve because first of all, this is not like MLM. This is not like insurance. I'm not saying these are bad, but when it comes part to this, it's harder to come out from your mouth to want to pitch those products to, uh, to your family members or to your friends or to a stranger. But when you're talking about this, this business model, basically nobody is a losing party. You don't have to fork out cash in any way. So it's easier to pitch. So I think giving, this is giving money start. is easier, obviously. Yeah, taking <laughs> taking money from government is easier. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Give money to people, people accept you. <laughs> correct, correct. You made a very strong point. You should join us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Thank, thank, thank you, you very very much for all your clarifications and uh, answers. And any questions so far for Aris and his team from the rest of us? Short anything from your side. Okay, so for me, probably, uh, if, if I may, right, okay, then probably one, one last question will be that, uh, you know, uh, because over there, we saw that uh, we saw a list of causes mark that's available at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but let's say uh, among all the causes, right, which are the ones that are more, like, for example, hot causes at this point, or maybe pro probably, you know, uh, relevant to, to, to us, like, as consultants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of, the, some of the consultants here. Yeah. Eddie, your experience or Nila? Okay, um, one of our favorite ones right now is called the retail uh, emerging technology. Uh, it's my favorite as well. The reason also because it does two things. Um, it teaches uh, us to open your own, um, to manage your own business. Uh, basically, like uh, how you even, uh, you know, how you manage your staff, uh, how do you do your profit and loss, um, how do you, you know, it, uh, how you do your pastel and SWOT analysis and all that kind of stuff if you want to start your own business and how you even do, uh, if you want to do your business online, how you go about doing that um, as well. So that's really interesting because in this um, pandemic, right, we, we, not a lot of people could find a job. So, but there's a lot of things that's available online. So this could be an opportunity that, for them to learn as well. And then um, secondly, it's also as a company or even as individual, as employees, um, they're also teaching them how to do workplace communications. Uh, it's also uh, teaching them uh, how to adapt to change uh, as a company or as a staff, you know, uh, about customer service and all that. So it's relevant for any, it's because it's generic enough for any type of job. Uh, so it's easier for them to, you know, for even a lot of companies, corporate companies are sending their staff for this type of uh, modules. They might not send them for the whole diploma, but they will take like some of the modules because it's relevant. So that is also, that's one of the favorite ones. And I think it's also important um, to be, like, as, as an individual, to open your own business and able to learn this because it, 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 it's good for you for the long run, you know. Um, so that's why I think it's the most favorite one right now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think I want to add on to that because Sean also asked about uh, consultants yeah. because I know Sean that you are uh, an insurance agent as well. Um, so I myself. Uh, I think uh, because some of us are also la, as consultants. Oh, okay. Uh, so. uh, yeah, so I'm an IFA uh, with Promised Land. I think uh, one that uh, would definitely be very helpful would be um, other than e commerce because when it comes to e commerce, you also learn a little bit more on digital marketing as well. Right? So if you want to set up an online store, you're definitely going to learn how to you know, get clients online. Um, I myself have been doing digital marketing for the last uh, four to five years right now. It's definitely helped me in my business. So if you are consultants, um, you know, looking to, you know, figure out how to run ads online, um, how to, you know, set up a blog, you know, do videos and all that. I think some of the modules will definitely cover that as well. Um, I think moving forward, you know, the, uh, you know, your roadshows aren't going to help. I think a lot of us definitely person, personal recommendations are uh, a great way to get uh, clients. Uh, but I think digital marketing and the online space uh, there's a lot more um, 
you know opportunities there as well. Yeah. Okay, just to re-emphasize on what Nila has mentioned, right? I think Sean uh, mentioned what would be the key interesting factors for, for you as a consultant. Um, many people got the misconception that the diploma, the retail diploma is something like a brick and mortar shop. Like they will mm. tell, come and tell me, oh, I don't want to sit inside the shop and sell clothes, sell bread, you know, those kind of things. But the idea, the, the idea of uh, the term retail is at the end of the day is selling providing uh, products or services because you're either selling a product or you're selling a, a service or you're selling at the end of the day, you're selling yourself as a salesperson. So being a consultant, right? You should make yourself, how to make yourself more likable, how to communicate more effectively, how to mm. do better presentation. So all this you will learn from the specialist retail diploma. Uh, so it's not those general like just setting up a shop and then start selling what product, uh, how to reach out to customers. It's not something like that. It's a lot more than that. So I think be, uh, if you're a consultant, then this is something that you need to also pick up the skill set on. Yeah. And I think a lot of us will have different needs, different areas of weaknesses or strength we want to work on as well. And I think that uh, uh, the best way would still be, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, um, you know, uh, consultation with us, just come down. I think um, finding out what definitely would suit you better, you personally, uh, you know, because we all have our different areas that we want to work on. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're friendly people, do come down, do speak to us. And I think a more um, in-depth conversation uh, would definitely be very helpful. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Harris, uh, and Thank uh, you. for all your valuable input. Uh, okay, uh, now we have come to the end of the, our session. Uh, thank you everyone for attending. Uh, I uh, especially I'm very happy for the guest speaker and uh, thanks uh, Sean for inviting. And I also like to uh, thank uh, Chai Tun and uh, Ching for doing a wonderful presentation in the first half of the meeting. So I think good effort. So uh, everything tonight we will call it the uh, night is about 9.45. Uh, thank you everyone for attending. I hope to see you all at our next meeting in January. Thank you. Happy, Good night. happy New Year. Happy New Year to you all. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Happy New Year, everybody. Bye. 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 Anybody wants to stay back? Yeah. Uh -huh. For those uh, members who want to stay back, please stay back. The rest, uh, we, if you want to go, you can leave already. Uh, thanks a lot for coming. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye. Okay, bye-bye.